Hello, and welcome to the Oh, hello there. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're expecting your usual. Welcome to the TBI podcast, Those Bored Individuals. Well, you see, about that, the podcast is now, how you say, under new management. In honour of International Women's Day, I have made the executive decision to take control of this channel and assume my place as the head of this organization. Mr. Michael and Dudley have been uh, retired and firmly replaced with my people. Ladies, care to introduce yourselves? <laughs> um, I'm Ali. Um, <laughs> and Twilight, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Twilight. <laughs> Ladies, we're trying to do a professional ear here. <laughs> <laughs> the time has come to take this channel in a new direction. A fresh direction, if you will. <laughs> oh dear. I have taken full control. I have rebranded accordingly to cater to my designs. Ladies and gentlemen, the TBI podcast is no more. Welcome, everyone. To the Berry Blast Podcast, home of Rowan Berry Sharp herself. <laughs> okay, but why am I still here? Because you're the only one with the password to the YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Fair point. Think, Daniel, think. <laughs> now let's get on with it. Onward. Ah, so yes, uh, Rowan has now assumed control. I'm just in the background so god i'm actually quite nervous because i feel like anything i say could end up being offensive so <laughs> anyway um just putting this out there for those of you who are who were curious about no podcast last month is because uh i have decided to skip out a month between podcasts just to allow for a bit of breathing time and uh, to allow more things to happen and golly did I eat my words. We know that the world is a really big mess currently and we send all our support to those who are struggling out there but anyway we're here now and Rowan is in charge. So Rowan, last time I checked you were in America. Yes, I was. The reason this International Women's Day special is a little delayed was because I was, in fact, in the States, and with the time zone difference, it would have made uh, doing a podcast on the day a bit difficult, so we decided to defer until I was home safe and my jet lag had cleared. <laughs> uh, so, what was it like? Oh, it was great. We went to quite a few places, actually. We went to LA, we went to Tennessee, and we went to Sonoma. Ooh. Did anything interesting happen? I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, it was a surprisingly low energy holiday, though. Uh, we were all exhausted from the, the plane, and there was a lot of driving, so a lot of it was sort of spent inside with the odd trip out to. The shops mostly. We didn't really do anything touristy, unfortunately. So, <laughs> oh well. Perhaps next time. <laughs> well, uh, what was now? I've only been to America once when I was like six, and that was for Disneyland. But yeah, what was what was it like? Uh, the uh, was TV different? The sights different? Uh, hmm, how to put it, because Sonoma, Tennessee, and L.A. are all very different places, like, surprisingly enough. Like, L.A. was really city-city, like, the suburbs with all the house close, houses closest together. Mm. Uh, it was quite nice there. Uh, pool in the back garden, always nice. Uh, uh, Tennessee, either Tennessee or Sonoma were my favourites, though, because in Tennessee... Uh, it was sort of a farm building, so we were out in the field with quite a lot of space around us and got to do quite a bit there. We, Ooh. I went quad biking, I rode on a, on a, go, a golf cart, 
even shot a few guns, actually. Jesus. <laughs> You've actually shot guns. Yeah, um, a friend of my aunt who we were staying with, uh, he's a hunter, so when he heard that the tourists were in town, you know he had to bring along the, the food stuff. Jeez. <laughs> That sounds fun. That, that is that is he scary. It was. It's very loud. Um, mm. He brought yeah. a pistol and he brought one of those big, like shotguns. So <laughs> I haven't shot a shotgun. I've shot a pistol before. Like my dad taught us how to shoot. But... Yeah, pistols are way easier because yeah, uh, you can't really shot kill. Shotgun. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, the pistol was way easier because. You can't really tell from my voice, but I'm actually quite small and very light, so mm. trying to heft uh, the shotgun was hard enough. When I shot it, the kickback almost sent me flying faster than the bullet. <laughs> I can imagine. Now, I could just... Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just getting cartoon images in my head, like yeah. like the uh, like the kickback just sends you flying straight through a wall or something. Yeah. <laughs> I get shot back, but the bullet stays in place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's more or less what happened. <laughs> uh, then we, after Tennessee, we visited Sonoma, where a family friend was, and that was also really nice. Um, a family friend uh, owns a winery, so mm. you can imagine how much fun I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brews his own wine, has his own vineyard. It's very, very fun. <laughs> Sounds posh. <laughs> uh. I might send over a few pictures uh, if Dan is willing yeah. to see a few. Uh, I'm going to get a few of the good ones from my dad and brother at some point, so look forward to that. <laughs> nice. Did you see yeah. any interesting wildlife when you were there? Um, I saw a hummingbird. Got a picture of it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's not like a, a very good picture. It's from a phone, so the <laughs> the wings are just a blur, and it's a bit uh, a wee bit dark. But considering it was on a phone, the fact that I got a picture of a hummingbird at all was frankly impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So yeah, that's definitely one coming up. Yeah, it's quite ironic because I think you saw a snowstorm before you saw a bear. <laughs> yeah. It snowed in Tennessee, so that was quite good. A very nice texture as well. It was the good powdery stuff, so yeah, that was <laughs> fresh powder. That's what I'm named after. <laughs> oh darn it, Dan! Even when I'm out of the country, you can't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just uh, uh, yeah. Get back in your cage. Get get back in there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, enough about me. What have you guys been up to? Anyone wants to start? Allie? <laughs> oh, um... Well, yeah, I've had quite a... Well, I would say I've been full even though I haven't left my house. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been working on my comic a lot. That's been a lot of fun. Mm. Um, oh, I'm, right. I'm just writing... I'm writing on a comic, like, with some dragon characters that Snake stuff, like, me and Snake stuff we're talking about, like, a lot, like, last year. Um, oh. And it's been really fun to like write that and like I've been like designing a lot of characters and it's just been a lot of like fun just messing on stuff mm. Um, mm. and uh, well um, other than that well not much just a lot of work and stuff but <laughs> no mental really than fun. like the last few weeks so <laughs> considering yeah. I've gotten like a lot more done that way um, how about everyone else? Twilight. Well, I've been mostly at uni. Mm -hmm. We're working on a play. Ooh. So oh, ooh, that's cool. Um, is it hard? What was that? Uh, is it an original play or is it like a rewrite of an existing sort of story? No, it's uh, it's for our end of year show, so it has to be a scripted pre-existing play. Ah, okay. So we're working on what's called the Fairy Mom. Um, ooh. It's Sounds about Northern Ireland, so Ooh. lots of learning how to do a Northern Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet that's difficult. It, it is. It's probably one of the hardest accents I've had to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. As well, what else we're we doing? Um, I've got 
my first Comic Con is in two days. So mm. that's exciting. Oh, that sounds Ooh. exciting. First one back. Ah. Uh. Um, so we've got that. That's in Birmingham. So that'll be good. Oh, what are, you go- are you going with anything or are you just casual? Uh, I'm doing Princess Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. Oh, oh classic. Good choice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I've been to see the Batman several times now. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I've heard good things. It's very good. Oh, I do hope to see it. Because after all, no one knows what it's like to be the Batman. <laughs> How was it? Michael's been told, like, I think Michael was telling us to watch, start getting into the DC stuff because he sent, like, a joke, a gif, and I said I haven't watched, like, any, like, DC films, but, like, was interested in the villains and stuff because it seemed a lot more, like, a little bit more fleshed out than the Marvel ones that are just oh, kind of there for one thing. Oh, and that always, like, interested us. <laughs> so Michael's been trying to convince us to get into DC more, so. You should. I mean, DC was <laughs> always my go-to comics when I was, like, in my very early nerd phase of, like, when I was, like, 13 mm. or watching DC mm. was, like, my favourite. And I kind of dropped off because the movies kind of got terrible for a while. Mm. Yeah. But, um... Like, I mean, I would recommend if you're going to start, I'd say start the Dark Knight trilogy. Yes. Just, mm. Probably the easiest way to get into Batman, which mm-hmm. is probably the, the best way to start getting into DC is through Batman. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's... Yeah, I've always been a... Oh. Uh, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, I've always been a Marvel girl, thanks to my dad, but yeah. definitely something to consider. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'd say that the comics are stronger. Than the Marvel comics at the moment as well, so mm-hmm. I've heard that I've heard that the DC has stronger comics when the Marvel has like the stronger movies, so like the yeah. both like popular. DC has kind of got the stronger animation side as well. Like their animated films of gen and TV shows generally are mm-hmm. better than the Marvel ones because a lot of the Marvel ones now are just Disney trying to churn stuff out for the sake of yeah. To be fair, they yeah. do have Marvel does have the big Disney budget now, so. Yeah, yeah, especially for the movies and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Live action shows, though, Marvel are definitely winning with the Disney Plus stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean... Anyway. Yeah, there's... I, know. I shall permit you to speak. Okay. Yes, master. <laughs> uh, yeah, Marvel's definitely going to be dishing out quite a lot of interesting products over the next few years. Because Miss Marvel... The first Muslim superhero is finally getting her time to shine in the upcoming series of the same name. I didn't even hear about that. That's cool. (laughs) Yes. Even though the name Captain Marvel is already taken, she's taking up the other name of Miss Marvel. Um, That is quite cool. Yeah. Um... But, oh gosh, it's coming out really soon, but one thing I am looking forward to this year, and Ren, maybe we might see it in cinemas, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, I remember that being teased when it, when the Spider-Man came out. Mm. I've seen the trailer twice now at the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my lord, if... The multiverse is definitely being opened if we, because now it's confirmed that we are getting the supernatural multiverse team called the Illuminati. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, basically the Illuminati is a multiversal group of Marvel's greatest leaders who basically converse with each other about their world's problems and suggesting different solutions to them. But the neat thing is, the Illuminati is always made up of Marvel's major leaders, like every Marvel's team leaders, like Iron Man, Mr. Fantastic, Black Bolt, Namor, the Sea Mutant, Doctor Strange, and, of course, Professor X. (sighs) Now, for those of you who haven't routinely watched the X-Men movies, let me tell you, if 
that is Patrick Stewart we're hearing, then my goodness. He definitely deserved that spot if he's going to be part of the Illuminati. <laughs> So, yeah. I watched X Men like at my grandma's like so many times when I was little, like the like the first ones, like well not the first first ones, but like the they were like new when they came out, <laughs> <laughs> like the one with that I don't even know what they're about anymore, but like the girl that like killed people when you touched her and stuff. <laughs> oh, rogue. Yeah, that that one. It was just played on like repeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen yeah. any of them. <laughs> I don't know the wow. them very well at all. I just know um, Wolverine from that one movie, and that's about it. I know um, that Deadpool's kind of tires them. I've seen that. Mm. Yeah. Deadpool's I've seen De- good. Deadpool films. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you're listening to the B- B- Berry Blast podcast. <laughs> well, The Batman is not the only film that people have been looking forward to, because recently I've seen Pixar's latest gem, Turning Red. Woo! Yeah, I'm that. So, Twilight, I know you've seen it. Why don't you describe it for us and your thoughts on it? So, I mean, I genuinely, I I thought it was really enjoyable. Um, Because I felt bad for it. I was like... I'm gonna watch this when it comes out just because the amount of like discourse that it caused of people just mm-hmm. complaining about it and saying Pixar's terrible now. So I was like, <laughs> I'm watching this movie just to see wow. if it is terrible as everybody is making it out to be before it comes out. And I thought it was really enjoyable. I thought the the main character was pretty relatable in like mm-hmm. I've definitely met thirteen year olds like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they definitely exist. Um it- and it was- it's very nostalgic mm-hmm. for the because it was set in like the early two thousands and I was born oh, in the early two thousands. I love that mm-hmm. because uh, Rowan, I may have brought this up to you a number of podcasts ago, but do you remember how I was writing my own story and I shared it with you? Yes, yes, I recall. To be honest, I kind of figured that that story would also take place in the two thousands, just to oh. yeah, just to sort of make things a bit more interesting, you know, another time, another place, etc. So I like the fact that they've done that. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard good things about uh, Turning Red, actually. (laughs) I think, I can't remember what I was doing when I watched it. I think I was, like, really tired or something. But, Mm -hmm. like, I did generally enjoy the film when I, like, when I first watched it. Like, I was, like, the, like... I think it was like an average amount of uncomfortable at some of the situations, like a normal amount, be- like yeah. because you relate to them, <laughs> and you're yeah. like, yeah. you know, you've been there, you felt that discomfort and stuff, and <laughs> like after watching it, I did like have a bit of a dislike for it because of like how it made us feel, but then I thought about it like for a while, like just in one day, and like I became more and more res- like respect for what they did, and like really ended up loving it, yeah. like yeah. especially on, like when I watched it again. Mm. Like, because at first I was like, I don't know how I feel because it was a new direction. I've never seen, like, I've never seen people get that, like, it's a, like, a controversial topic and topics and stuff. And then, yeah. and it just took us off guard. And then I ended up thinking that I really liked it after that. <laughs> but there was definitely a, like. <laughs> there was definitely a, uh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> and especially some of the topics, because like, I've been in a very um, specific, like, friendship group when I was that age. I was at, like, everyone was, like, generally quiet about that stuff. Like, the stuff they were talking about. And yeah. until later on in life. So, like, I never had that exact experience. Mm. But I know, but I know, she, uh, they're, they're. <laughs> I am, okay. like, it is still relatable at the same time. Like, it was, it was just, I, re- I did enjoy the movie quite a lot. Yeah. Especially looking at the concept art for it when, like, later on. And, um, like, all of the animators seem to really love making the movie. And it's, like, it just made us, like, more, um, like, confident that I wanted to, like, go into that. Because yeah. it just seemed, like, so, like, fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, myself, also love it. I thought it was precious. At the same time, yeah, I understand that uh, because... This is just me, a boy, talking, but um, 
speaking from experience, I think this movie is kind of a metaphor for uh, anxiety and puberty and such. Because when you think about it, puberty movies are really, really hard to uh, bring to life because they're always on that gray thin line where it's somewhat innocent, but yet it's delving into somewhat risky territories like do we want to go here do we want to bring this to the masses but they did it anyway and here we are they went for it Mm -hmm. well good that they went for it Mm. yeah um the characters are amazing i think my favorite character out of that movie was probably abby Oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, she's just so... All, like, all of the characters were great. <laughs> she's just so delightfully aggressive. And it's <laughs> amazing. I think we all, like, know someone like that as well. <laughs> like, everyone has that, like, in the friend group at that time. Yeah. Had someone that just had that energy. <laughs> yeah, she's very much a girl who's definitely goth, but doesn't dress but Clearly, you can tell she doesn't dress dress goth because of her parents. <laughs> yeah. I think with the movie as well, is like, I think somebody in my uni was like, oh, it, it made me, like, one of the guys, he was like, it made me a little bit uncomfortable because they were talking about periods. And I was like, <laughs> that's your problem, not the movie's problem, mate. <laughs> yeah. natural thing that happens. And Welcome to reality, kid. He's like, welcome to reality. But I've seen a few comments like that, and I'm like, well, that's the problem with society. Yeah. I think that that is something that is disgusting and wrong when it's like, actually, it's, it's a natural thing that... You can't just be like, nope, I'm not going to have that today. Like, <laughs> Yeah, boy, well, guess what? Your mother had it. Jeez. <laughs> uh, one other thing I will say about Turning Red is that after seeing the movie, say what you like, but I now want a, I now want a large panda me plushie. <laughs> yes. Because yeah, I've... The, the Disney store has one, but it's £40, pounds and I'm like... Oh, not, that's not it. Okay. It is... That is... It, that plush is literally perfect. It's I think so large bean-shaped plushies are the way to anyone's heart. I think that's... Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of why I have Waylord here, so... <laughs> I'm, just imagine... <laughs> like, imagine a May Panda May plush. Same dimensions, just... <laughs> That's me with my Dragonite plushie because it's got a big belly. It's really soft, and I always have it with us. Nice. <laughs> yeah, just a, a bean me with a little dangly tail. <laughs> little fluffy tail. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I, uh, another thing I would like to bring up is, considering, uh, the whole theme of the movie is that when. May shows extreme emotion, she becomes her giant red panda form. So, uh, this is just a random question, but if your family experienced something similar, what would that animal be? Hmm. Good question. (laughs) Because I think if it were me and we suddenly uh, became uh, giraffes or something... (laughs) I mean, my mum loves giraffes, so <laughs> that could be an issue for me, so. My guess would be an owl, because uh, that my mum loves owls. She has little statues of them all over the place, <laughs> paintings of them. Yeah, I feel like an owl would be a safe bet if that were a family secret. Sports. <laughs> Twilight? Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't because I think it's like we all like very different animals like I mean my mum loves giraffes and she looks like flamingos but I'm very like I like like wolves and like lizards and like reptiles <laughs> my mum's not into reptiles um and it's like I think I think maybe we could all collectively get along if we were all guinea pigs <laughs> oh <laughs> guinea, like pigs. guinea pigs we have we have guinea pigs we love them right <laughs> 
<laughs> Ellie? Oh, right. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I was going <laughs> to... Um, I think, sorry for interrupting you when I start just badgers in the middle of your sentence, but um, yeah, I think badgers would be the one that our family would turn into. We've got like a, like a history of like, we've got like a badger set on like my granddad's property that's been there for ages and we always used to sit and watch them and stuff. Mm. Like, like collectively, like there's like generations of badgers that live like in Scotland up next where my, um, my granddad's like land and stuff. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, holiday home. I've only so ever seen one there, badger in the area, but carry on. a badger set. And then, and every like, every time we go up, we'd eat food up for it and it would come up to us and eat the food and it was always like great. <laughs> it was only a little, there was like little baby ones and stuff. It was adorable. Oh. I've never seen a badger. I'm too in the city for a badger. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Well, I don't think I've seen a badger. Yeah. Chance. <laughs> I don't blame I badgers for like... not visiting my area because we've got s- <laughs> nearly everyone on our estate has a dog and they bark their heads off at random points and it's like, yeah, I don't blame you guys for not wanting to be here either. <laughs> yeah. I was just like enough, like, because he has like this little farmhouse like in Scotland. Um, I don't think... I haven't been there in years because he's like letting it out to people and stuff mm. and you know that because that like that's what he does for a living and stuff that's what he's always done he's like but he like finds places and like sells them mm. but while we were there like building it and stuff not well my family was i was too young at the time but every night we'd just sit outside and watch the badgers it was great <laughs> yeah so yeah Whatever you think of Turning Red, it'll definitely be an interesting watch for everyone this summer. Well. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of recent releases, jeesh, another Pokemon generation already? Oh, yeah. What are we on, Gen 9? Yeah, Pokemon <laughs> Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but, oh my... I, we definitely didn't uh, expect that one. Um, I was on a, a voice chat with uh, Snake Staff and Kage at the time uh, when we were watching it, just like literally before we just happened to be a voice chat and and then we decided to just stay on while it was playing. And I was just like, you know what, I'll just press record. So I have the entire thing recorded where every like you can hear the point where each of us realised like, oh. separate points. Oh my. Is that, like, that... Realized straight away. Is that video going to be available to watch at some point or, or what? Oh, I hope so. I well, I'd like to like put like to like animate some like animate us into it. Like Ooh. and do that and publish it of us like talking like have the video that I was watching <laughs> and then in the corner there's just like us animated doing like talking about it and stuff. Nice. But it's just the funniest part is like at the end when the um the the starters came up in the trailer like we were just all laughing and we're like oh my god this is like amazing and then <laughs> and then there was like scarlet violet and it was almost over and then Kage went wait is this a new generation <laughs> <laughs> it took him and that long to like, realize <laughs> because it was just because he let his guard down so much like he was so ready for nothing to be announced because he's like been disappointed so many times uh. that he was just not expecting anything <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, like the thing finished, and Snake Stuff went. You know what? I was really looking forward to Detective Pikachu there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I love watching it back. It was so funny. I didn't even watch the presents. <laughs> I didn't know there was a presents happening until like my friend was over, and we were writing scripts for a YouTube video for my channel. So we were just sat there at script writing and like talk, discussing like the topic that it's that the video is on and then i just get a text from my sister and it just says gen 9 <laughs> and i'm like what are you talking about and then i was like oh there's a gen i literally go on twitter and my whole twitter's just like like Pokemon, oh, no. and Violet. i'm like whoa and i'm like oh i guess the stars gen 9's a thing now yep now uh, a lot of people have already looked it very deep into this I originally thought the region was going to be Ireland, but a lot of people are saying that from the region's appearance and from the name naming of the starters that it could be set in Spain. Now, mm-hmm. either okay. option is viable because I've actually spotted a map of the region in that trailer. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, basically yeah. the north, west, and south sides of the map are all meeting the sea, so depending on what's to the other side, who knows? It could be Spain. It seems likely to be Spain uh, due to, well, specifically for me, Springa, Springatito. Well, uh, yeah. Gatito is yeah. like a Spanish Italian word for cat. So. Yeah. Springatito. Yeah. The one. I've seen a lot of memes regarding yeah. Springatito. Will this starter stay on all four legs? Only time will tell. Uh, I have so. or is people still deciding, or is anyone like? I I have decided. I I'm gonna use a random number generator. <laughs> <laughs> I've adopted that little fire crocodile thing as my own. It's like it's mine now. Ah, uh, it's Coco. adorable. I've managed to love all three of them though. Like They're all great. I think originally I was like spaghetti was my favorite, and then I re- saw the fire crocodile. And I was like, oh my god, I love him. I'm like after like, like look, looking at him. Look. <laughs> yeah, that little guy's plushy material. Was adorable as well. So. Oh, Quaxley? is my choice. Uh, they're all great. Now, I'm, I'm convinced. all I can say is, <laughs> if any of the starters are going to be a fighting type, me and Quaxley will gladly take that hit so that everyone else can prosper. Now, <laughs> I, I, I am actually looking forward that if Quaxley evolves to become a fighting type, the end result better be Donald Duck. Yeah, it needs to be Donald Duck. <laughs> I mean, even yeah. even his tail feathers, even his he's got white feathers. He's got a blue set of feathers on his head, like a sailor's cap. It's just uncanny. Oh, but you just have a figure of Donald Duck that you can just be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my um, the Disney Infinity figure I'm holding um because. Oh, I love Disney Infinity. Yeah, because Donald Duck is my favourite of the uh, top Disney characters. He's so, my yeah. favourite of, like, Mickey and Friends. My, <laughs> my only problems with the Donald Duck cartoons is that almost none of them had a happy ending. Like, oh, come oh, on. Yeah. Can't this, <laughs> can't this duck be angry and have a happy ending, please? <laughs> my favourite is that, that Disney did, like, a show um, that they didn't like like they did a sh- like a legend of the three caballero show and they didn't tell anybody they didn't make a thing about it it just dropped on when it was disney life and only in the philippines <laughs> so <laughs> in like full english like completely in english just the show and it was like where did this come from and the whole thing <laughs> starts with haha donald duck Donald Duck's house explodes. <laughs> it burns to the oh, ground. Wow. Daisy dumps him, and I'm like, "Yep, that's so Donald Duck." <laughs> <laughs> At least it had like a happy ending. Well, it kind of left on a cliffhanger, and I don't think they'll ever make a second series. So why they bothered with a cliffhanger, I don't really know. But it was, <laughs> he, I guess, Donald Duck kind of have a happier ending and gets. And it was nice to see Donald Duck's Latin American friends that occasionally pop up just to remind us they exist every like 10 years <laughs> uh yeah the only thing that's preventing uh uh oh i forgot their names now uh the the parrot and the rooster i forget their names half the time but i think the parrot is was originally going to be part of the main disney characters but the only thing that prevented him from truly being in that group was that he was a chronic smoker so he was left out <laughs> he was a chronic smoker <laughs> and then the the uh, panchito the rooster just constantly had guns <laughs> he was just <laughs> like a happy uh i don't know what the problem with his guns was i think i just see we've seen you Yos- yosemite sam and he's trigger happy all the time so why not what? here I mean, they've been brought up into, like, they've taken Jose's cigars out of his mouth, so they they have been brought up, like, now withering mm. things without being, I guess, like, controversial with weapons and <laughs> chain smoking, <laughs> so. At least they were in the, I was so happy when they were in the DuckTales reboot, because they're some of my absolute favourite Disney characters, because I, like, grew up watching the, the original film, <laughs> and I used to love the ride at Disney World, so... It was nice to see them in the DuckTales reboot and stuff. I was like, oh, I'm so, it makes me so happy when Disney acknowledges that they are a thing. And I'm like, yes, they are. They're great. <laughs> uh, the cross promotion in the new DuckTales reboot is just incredible. Uh, 
Uh, uh, you're listening to the Barberry Blast podcast. <laughs> well, girls, it's time for everyone's favorite segment, the month's most ridiculous headlines. <laughs> All right. In this month's news, crocodile hunter's son, Robert Irwin, is almost eaten alive by a giant 13-foot crocodile. Oh, no. Listen, well, <laughs> now, Robert, <laughs> Robert, I, I appreciate that you're stepping into your father's shoes, but, jeesh, 13-foot crocodiles <laughs> are not something we want to mess with. Yeah, no. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, Australians are just incredibly brave. Everything that lives there can kill you, and... They have to be especially brave to face off against them. I couldn't live in Australia. I don't like spiders. No. I don't even yeah. like the heat. Yeah, that's, no, that's another, definitely a, a factor of why I'm not going there anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I was literally like hiding from the sun yesterday, so. <laughs> I'm not sure. What's that show where they used to be like, uh, are you going to move to Australia or stay in Britain? And I'm like, stay in Britain because nothing's going to kill me in Britain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh my God. God Australia. And like, that was actually a thing, wasn't it? I just, that's yeah. brought back memories. <laughs> that was actually a show. Was like, Why was that a show? I don't know, but they'd always be moving to Australia and they'd be like leaving all of their friends and family behind to go and start a life in a country where literally any animal could probably kill them. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, uh, spiders and lizards. In the words of Carl Pilkington, spiders and lizards are normally found under rocks. Uh, the earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock, and they're trying to hide underneath it. <laughs> it can't be cool, though. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, I, I can't take credit for that. Carl Pilkington, you... Uh, are the original yeah <laughs> okay here's the next headline now it's a fake headline but it's still pl- pretty ridiculous uh-huh. Nintendo announces all their still functioning Wii's will self destruct in 2023 <laughs> I think oh I remember that one I saw that oh my god didn't they have to actually like send out a thing saying this isn't true and stuff because everyone was actually thinking that we were gonna self-destruct yeah like i genuinely got concerned like oh god this this thing's right under my bed along with all my other old electronics what do i do god i mean it's not even something like out of reach for nintendo like they've like they've took away the e-shops (laughs) <laughs> if you had any games downloaded on your Wii, you can't play them anymore because you don't own the rights to them. Like, why not just blow them up? <laughs> yeah, uh, they stop making the 3DS. Uh, oh, that's sad. Don't worry, Tomodachi life. My islands my will never die. My 3DS is a little yes. bit like dodgy these days. So. Mm-hmm. Mine doesn't charge. Well, it does. You have yeah. to bend the wire around it and like wrap it around like five times. My oh, yeah. yeah. That always happens. Why? Couldn't know we're bonding over a problem that I didn't realise we all had. It's like, let's bond about the 3DS not being able to charge properly. (laughs) Uh, I thought it was just a me thing, and I have two of them, and both of them are exactly the same with a new charger. (laughs) uh, I get a second hand one to chip. That was like 15 quid that, so I could trade with myself in Pokemon because I had no friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of something where... Now, back in the day, me and my younger brother both had DSs and we were accustomed to the concept of Pokemon trading. And since then, my brother has no longer needed his DS and I suggested... Well, why don't you um, hand it over to me so at least then I can trade with myself? And my parents suggested that I pay my seven-year-old brother at the time for the DS. Why? 
We live under the same roof. Why do I need to pay for his? You could have it back at any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least, he, at least he was more cooperative than when he was give, uh, when he was when we had the Xbox between us. Because he hogged it all the time. And the only time he let me have it permanently was when it was outmoded. Oh. Yeah, My thanks for that. PS4 last year, she just took the PS4 and took it to her room so she could play on it, like play her F1 game on it. And I was like, you realise that we're using that as the DVD and Blu-ray player, right? Because our one <laughs> doesn't, like we don't have one down there. So I couldn't watch like... And I wanted, it was like around Christmas, and I wanted to watch Christmas Carol Goes Wrong, and I couldn't because she'd taken it and just <laughs> run away with it. And I was like, well, I can't watch that now, can I? Oh. And then I had to have it put back downstairs. I was like, it needs to come back down because my friend's coming over for a Lord of the Rings marathon. So we need the Blu ray player to watch the Lord of the Rings. I'm uh. going to have to come downstairs. And luckily, it stayed that's, down there so I can play Arkham Knight. That's now. an Xbox, is perfect. Like, that's, that's what consoles with the discs where the disk space is literally used for if you don't play games anymore. Oh my god, I just remembered something else. Okay, now this next story is probably the most tragic and ridiculous case of getting a console that I've ever experienced. So, I am a Nintendo lad. I played the Wii, the DS and such, and... Unless there was a console exclusive game that I wanted to play on another console, I would either wait for it to come on the Xbox, or if it was on the PS4, just accept that I don't have a PS4 or whatever and just left it there. However, one birthday or Christmas, my older half-brother gave me and my brother a PlayStation 3. But the problem was he got games that I don't think I would would ever play for any console. Like FIFA and uh, race car games and I I don't I don't play this. I I play like Pokemon and Legend of Zelda and Mario Kart. And so games. And so for a for a while I didn't actually play it. It was only until I realized some point later that, hey, wait a minute, now that we have a PS3, I can start looking for games that I would play on this. And so I went for the most obvious choice to play, and that was Little Big Planet. Aww. Oh my god. Yeah. And so I eventually got it, I played it, and I enjoyed it, and. Yeah. One day, I decide to play Little Big Planet again. I go into my brother's room, and the PlayStation's not there. And oh. so, I distinctly didn't remember it being in my room last time, so I was really confused. Like, where is it? And so, I went down to my mom and asked, Hey, mom, uh, where's the PlayStation? And she was like, oh, uh, we gave it away. Uh, what? Uh, why did you give it away? Well, it's because you weren't playing on it. it uh, I, I literally bought a game for it last week, and now it's go- <laughs> and now the bloody console's gone. I can't even play it anymore. <laughs> I was so I was so angry. Like you can't just give away a person's console without asking them if it was all right. Same thing happened to me. Sheesh. The Xbox 360. I haven't played on it in ages, so to be fair, I understood my dad sold it thinking I didn't need it anymore. But I came around and I was like, I, I, you know what, like, I, I could really go with playing it again. And my dad was like, oh, I sold it so you could have your Switch. And oh. I was like, I mean, fair enough, but you should have asked me because um, I literally have, like, the... I have, like, a bunch of the Arkham games, and I'm like, well, I can't play Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, or Arkham Origins, because they're all on the Xbox 360. I can only play Arkham Knight on the PS4. Oh, parents, if you're... Now, parents, take this into account. 
ask your children's permission if you're going to give away any toy or game or console because one day we're going to realize that those things aren't there anymore and we are going to hold a grudge. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking at Little Big Planet now. It's just sitting up there gathering dust. Oh, anyway, here's the next headline that I have. A YouTube couple who attempted to spend the night in Target now face seven years in prison. Oh my god. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? Why are these wow. YouTubers so like, yeah, I'm going to do this like really stupid thing that's probably going to get me in trouble? I've seen count I've seen countless channels like that. Oh, we're going to we're going to hide in this major establishment without anybody noticing and build a fort and spend the night there and then come morning we're going to sneak out as a regular customer <laughs> no and nobody notice. notices anything. Like are you trying to throw your lives away? <laughs> Oaks. Cameras are a thing. Yeah. And they should know they're using them. <laughs> no, sheesh. Seven years in prison. What did you think? They were the ones. I swear, some some of them tried to do a fake bank robbery. And oh got in God! Deep for doing a bank robbery prank. Oh wow! You know, um, we actually found a YouTube channel. Like, right? Because you know how some of my like has land and stuff. Like, we don't have like money or anything. That's anyway. Um. People assume that because, it, but anyway, sorry. And he had like a caravan on, up, um, on on some of his land and stuff. And people came on and bent the caravan. Obviously, we can't afford the caravan. Jeez. But what they did was they videoed it and put it on YouTube. So we found who did it. Jeez. <laughs> and it's just like, why would like we could we watched them like smashing the windows and stuff, and then they lit it on fire and was running away laughing. And we're just like. We can see. Yeah, yeah you're fine. How is that a small idea? Setting a caravan on fire. Look, Dudley, if you're listening to this, be be careful out there because that could it easily was, happen it, to you. <laughs> it was in the middle of nowhere. Like there wasn't like another house nearby for miles. Like it like it didn't have a road leading up to it or mm. anything. <laughs> no, the last. But apparently, it's a popular hiking trail. Sorry, I just interrupted. You. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, the last headline that I have isn't that major, but it is, uh, it does relate to us, so here we go. A, a Pokemon Legends Arceus player has made a bridge of bee barrels to get to hidden locations across the water earlier in the game. Oh my god. <laughs> so imagine that, he just catches a ton of bee barrels and lets them loose, and just walks across their backs. I wow. mean, B-Barrel is a famous uh, move slave, but this is taking it to a whole nother level. <laughs> I mean, how many would you, like, how many would you need to, like, get over those islands in the first level Jeez. of the game? Uh, probably, I mean, I guess you just... Like more than you can get in your party. <laughs> I mean, I guess because... You can, I guess he just hops from B barrel to B barrel, and just as soon as one goes back into the ball, he just sends it out to the front of the line. Mm, kind of like in Zelda when you like hop over Cryonus. Huh. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, oh my gosh, that was another thing that was released recently. So, what are your thoughts on Pokemon Breath of the Wild? I mean Breath of the Wild. Sorry, I mean Breath of the Wild. Oh my god. I mean Breath of the Wild. I mean... Oh god. Breath of the Wild. It, uh... Take a second, Dan. Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> I haven't uh, finished it yet. I um... much of it. <laughs> well, it is definitely one of the most inspired Pokemon games in recent years. I love the yeah. ancient Japanese feel of it, and the mm. fact that they straight up mentioned that people can technically die in this time period. Oh yeah, that was like 
whoa, didn't expect that when I first played it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And speaking <laughs> from personal experiences, my god, shinies are ridiculously easy to find. I nearly filled up a whole box full of them because they're just open, they're just out in the open and they just walk around so you can tell which ones are shiny and <laughs> they even have a little jingle so you can always see yeah. them coming. It's, it's funny because they have the same odds as any other game, it's just because so many are being brought up at once that like, that it's like a thousand encounters like in one in like one run around the place <laughs> like wow. so you just it's like shiny hunt on like five times speed so when it normally takes someone five hours because of how many times you'd have to roll it and you get one pokemon and one pokemon now because there's so many at once you just roll the dice for all of them and it's like more likely it happened on each individual one yeah because c- we had this full conversation a while ago um it, but the odds themselves for each pokemon is the same which is like Probably quite a bad idea. They were just like, oh yeah, make it the same. <laughs> but because there's so many Pokemon, because it's open world. Well, not open world, but like, semi-open world. Yeah. yeah. Like, it makes it like, super, like, over the top easy to get them. Especially with hordes and stuff. They, I half expected them to patch it, like, as a glitch or something. <laughs> like, no, don't, yeah. give, don't give them any ideas. The shinies could disappear through that. Just edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shh, shh. next segment, next segment. Uh, uh you're listening to the Berry Blast podcast. Uh. All right, well, anyone who's been watching recently knows I recently started a new job. Hmm. And what is and, that job? Uh, technically I've been customer service. But I've been doing other things like around the office. It's a small company, so I help out with the website. I help out with admin. I, I'm generally a bit of everywhere at once, wherever I'm needed. Nice. Well, after several months of working as a technically customer service representative, your girl experienced her first ever entitled Karen. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> Yep. Tell us the story. Very well. I shall tell you the story. Allow me to set the scene. Mm -hmm. The office is empty except for one lone girl. Your girl, me, Rowan. One of my colleagues has just stepped out of the office. Uh, My mentor, he's gone off to a shop just to pick up some things for the office. I'm sitting away, tapping away on my laptop. Minding my own business when I get a phone call. That's fine. I just do my usual thing. I answer questions to the best of my ability. If I cannot answer a question, I will take their name and number and I will have someone else call them back. Mm-hmm. That is what I thought to myself as I picked up the phone. Hello, welcome. How can I help you today? I'll tell you how you can help me today. And that's when I knew oh. it was going to be a tough one. Oh, just... As soon as they start off a conversation like that, then you know you're going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just say wrong number, hang up the phone, and run away. Uh, well, unfortunately, I'm a little too polite for my own good when it comes to work, so... Uh, to keep it short and to keep it fairly anonymous, I do. Uh, we have goods delivered to people. So, and when... Sometimes those goods either go missing, get damaged, and when that happens, they call us Mm. uh, just to get it sorted out. And uh, what had happened with this lady is that she had gotten what she ordered and it had been installed fully to completion. And then she discovered that the item in question had been damaged. So, of course, she is upset because she has spent so much money on not just buying and getting the delivery for this item, but she had to pay someone separately to have it fitted. That is a lot of money. That is fair. However, here's the thing. We do not work in conjunction with any fitters. That is up to the discretion of the customer. 
So, right. if an object has been damaged in transit, then yes, that may be on us, but you tend to notice damage when you open the package. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you tend to yeah. open notice damage when the package is opened which the fitter had indeed done he had the fitter had the package uh, he opened it up and inspected it he fitted it anyway <laughs> if it was not damaged by us it was damaged by the fitter uh, when it was being put up and he said nothing right so no matter what way you look at it my place of work wasn't really at fault for any of this hmm the thing about entitled Karens, though, logic does not always apply to their thought process. Uh. <laughs> so, she she told me the story. I have damaged goods on my wall now. I This is unacceptable. What are you going to do about it? And I think, okay, damaged goods have been installed. I tell her, miss, I don't have the qualification to offer a refund or anything like that, but if you give me your name and number, I can have my supervisor call you. No, 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 no. I've called plenty times now, and I'm always getting shunted off to the side. I want your supervisor right now. Now, if you were listening, you will remember my supervisor had just stepped out to the shops. Uh, uh madam, I... The supervisor isn't in right now. He'll be back his, uh, soon. What do you mean he's not there? Do you not have phones? Can you not just call him? Miss, this is a landline. He's gone out to the shops. This is the worst customer service I have ever had. I have rights, you know. I have... <sighs> this is unacceptable. And, I mean, there's a point where you can only see one thing on loop. Miss, my supervisor is out. I can have him call you back as soon as he gets back. Turned into... The minute he steps into this office, the, the minute I smell him, I am giving him your number <laughs> and having him call you back. And it was just a loop. I I want him now. He's not here right now. I will tell him to give you a call. No, I want someone right now. Madam, I am alone in the office. There is no one else in here. Unacceptable. I want someone right now. Mm. And, yep. I actually got so flustered. I texted my supervisor being like, help lady mad at me what do i do <laughs> and he he called me back but obviously i'm already on the phone to this lady and if i try to hang up on her it's going to make it worse yeah i instinctively answer his call but i don't say anything i just like i just let it play out like me going as soon as he's back i'll let you i'll tell him to give you a call no 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 no. i want him now there's no one here right now i want him now and i'm i'm just like letting my phone pick this up and eventually eventually at last my, well no actually what happened was that two other people came into the office but one was the accountant and one was uh like the shop manager who was busy with his own job so they couldn't help me so they were just staring at me with pity as i tried to tell this lady ma'am there's no one here who can help you right now i will tell them to give you a call and i'm just stuck in this loop and Ugh. i'm getting flustered and what else can you say except i'm sorry this has happened but there's nothing i can do and when they refuse to accept that as an answer what can you do hang up just <laughs> well i wasn't sure if i was allowed to do that so i was just kind of stuck and <laughs> uh, eventually, I, my supervisor came back and I saw him through the window. I was like, "Oh, okay, there he is. He's he's coming now. I'm just gonna pass you over. Here you here you go." And I just felt like my head set in his hand. It wasn't even like we all have our own like separate landline and headset, so it wasn't even his. I just shoved it into his hand because I got so flustered. Uh. And he was able to get the full story out of her and be like, "Miss." If the item was damaged in transit, that means your fitter put it on knowing it was damaged. If he damaged it, then he damaged it. This has nothing to do with us. <laughs> oh! Oh, okay then. And the, the reason I wasn't able to tell about myself was because, like, she was, we were in this loop. The, I want a supervisor. He's not here right now. He did, her version of the story was all like garbled and I couldn't get a bead on it so yeah 
a simple solution stuck behind a loop of garbled nonsense. Ugh. And that's my entitled Karen story. Jeez. Karen's the worst. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kyle's and Karen's, they are a menace to society. Indeed. Everyone is eventually going to have some story of them. I know for a fact that I have, which I brought up in a previous podcast. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, we're almost out of time for this podcast. So is there anything else you would like to bring up before we bring this podcast to a close? Nope, telling that story has made me so exhausted just thinking about it. (laughs) (laughs) So, yep. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Lot. It's... oh, sorry. This <laughs> My dad's telling me the spotlights are out for some reason. I don't know what that means. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, uh, I think that might be Dudley uh, telling us where he is. Did you... did you... Uh, are you holding him captive somewhere, Ryan? No. <laughs> Anyway, I guess this was the Girl Power special, so thank you, Twilight and Allie, for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, yeah. Well, Well, until uh, the next podcast, which might be in June, so anyway, we'll... or May. I... (laughs) it's been a while. Anyway... (laughs) Thank you for listening. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.